Okay, so we're talking about three big ideas for today. Number one, unitization. All numbers have units. Unitization, big idea number one. Big idea number two, addition as the combination of like terms or like counts. Addition means we're combining like terms, combining like counts, okay? And then our third big idea, uh, studio time, we're gonna get in, work some problems, think deeply about content, and uh, kind of model that for your learners, okay? So these three big ideas, uh, so let's jump on in. Big, big idea number one, unitization. All numbers, all values have units. This is so important, especially uh, in when we talk about arithmetic to help our students bridge that gap as they transition from arithmetic to algebra. This idea of units, even when we're not talking about feet, seconds, dollars, right? Numbers have units, and so it's really important to gain understanding of that. So, uh, the idea of unitization, this three, three, that means something, that's counting something. Three means one plus one plus one, right? In other words, we're counting ones and we have three of them. So we could write it this way, right? Three ones or three holes. So when we talk about a whole number or an integer, they're counting something. They're counting holes, right? They're counting ones. Make that a little darker, okay? This next one, uh, we have three of two or three twos or three times two, right? We're counting twos and we have three of them. This isn't simply multiplication, right? This, this is creating a count of something. Counting by twos, and we have three of them. So we've got two plus two plus two, which gives us six, okay? Next one, two of three, two threes. We're counting threes, and we have two of them. Three plus three. And three plus three, we combine those, we get six. So we notice that three twos is six and two threes is also six, six holes or six ones, right? So they're equivalent. So three twos is the same as two threes because they both equal six, right? And so that property, it's great to bring in properties to bring in good vocabulary uh, for our learners, right? So this would be, we're not just gonna say we're, if we switch the order of the count, right? We still get the same answer. That's a commutative property. The commutative property lets us change the order of our numbers, of our values, and we still get the same overall value, right? So this is the commutative property. Of multiplication, okay, all right. Okay, next one. Again, we're looking at these values in terms of counts. What are they counting? How many do we have? Three divided by four. Three fourths. Three fourths. Do you hear the count? We're counting fourths and we have three of them. And we can even write this as three one fourths to kind of highlight that we're counting fourths or we're counting one fourths. Okay, next one. This is not 0.7, this is not 0.7, right? Our decimal system is based on units, based on tenths, based on tens, right? So this is the equivalent of seven tenths, seven tenths. That means we have tenths and we, uh, we're counting tenths and we have seven of them. Seven tenths, seven tenths. Next one, five, five of square root of three. Five groups of square root of three, right? This is saying we, we're, we have a, a square root of threes. That's our count, that's our unit, and we have five of them. Square root of three plus 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 square root of three, right? We have five square roots of three. Counting square root of three, we have five of them. Uh, this la uh, these last two, 9a, throwing in a variable, right? 9a, we are counting a's and we have nine of them. 
nine a, nine of a, nine a's. Six of the quantity x plus one, six of the quantity x plus one, right? We're counting x plus ones, whatever that value is, right? We're counting x plus ones and we have six of them. So looking at these as counts, as units, it's gonna be helpful as we continue to build on this content, okay? That's the big idea. Looking at these values, saying, what am I counting? What am I counting? How many do I have, okay? All right, big idea number one. Big idea number two. Addition as the combination of like terms or like counts. Addition as the combination of like terms or like counts, okay? And so a term is a count of something. So if we simply, if we have a number like five, right? That's, that's a term because it's five ones or five holes. If we have five X squared, that's a term because we're counting X squared. If we simply have X or M or P, right? That's counting one M, one X, one P. So that's a term. A term is a count of something. And terms are represented, terms or counts are represented through multiplication, right? Because we're saying, I have so many of this value, and that's multiplication, right? Okay, so let's look at these, and uh, uh, again, just thinking about what they're counting. These, these are terms, right? These are counts, and so here again, we've got a whole number three. This is counting uh, ones, and we have three of them. We have three ones, three holes, okay? Seven of four, or seven fours, we're counting fours, we have seven of them. This next one, 16 one-fourths, or 16 fourths, right? We're counting one-fourths, and we have 16 of them. This next one, we have two of three X. Two of three X, two three X's. Two, uh, two groups of three X, two times the quantity three X, right? We're counting three X's, and we have two of them. 3x is the unit, it's what we're counting, and we have two of them, okay? Uh, a, a regular, a plain variable with a coefficient, right? No other coefficient except for one, x, right? We're counting x's, we have one of them, that's a term. 5m, we're counting m's, we have five of them, that's a term. 1 fourth of 16, 1 fourth of 16, right? We're, here we're counting 16's, and we have a fourth of them. Our count is 16, but we have the number that we have is a fourth of them, okay? We're taking a fourth of them. And 16 fourths and a fourth of, of 16, right? We know these are equivalent, okay? But when we, when we switch the order, it changes how we're actually viewing it, what we're counting, how many we have, okay? Um, and then uh, just a quick note here, right? Division as a form of multiplication, because if we're talking about counts as multiplication, right? We're taking a, a, a portion of another number. We're taking a count, we're counting by twos, we're counting by fives, we're counting by X's, whatever. Whatever our unit is, right? Um, division can also be, uh, uh, when we see a term, when we see an expression with division, division is also, representing a term because we know division can be written as multiplication. I would not get into this really at this point if I were teaching to the learners. I just wanted to hit it, hit it up, and then we're gonna move on, right? Because 12 divided by three, I would go, I would go into depth about the definition of division, but uh, just to keep moving, right? 12 uh, divided by three, I could write it as a fraction, which means I'm writing 12 one-thirds. 12 divided by 3, 12 thirds is the same as 12 one thirds. So now I have it written as a count of multiplication. I'm counting thirds and I have 12 of them, okay? So this, this ties into what we're talking about with terms, okay? And of course, we can only combine terms when they have a common count. We can only combine terms with a common count, right? We often say like terms, common terms, that uh, common count, that kind of thing, right? Five feet and three feet. They both have the same count. They have the same unit. We're counting feet. Five feet and three feet, right? That's eight feet. But when we get to two feet, 
this next one, two feet and four inches. This first one, we're counting feet. We've got two of them. The second one, though, we're counting inches, and we have four of them, two feet and four inches, right? Those are not common units. They're not common counts. They are not counting the same thing, so we cannot add them together, okay? So we have to see, we have to work to see, right, if we can get a common count. Sometimes we can, um, and so uh, so let's, let's take a look here, right? So we can convert them to either feet or inches or even yards, right? There's normally a couple different ways we can we can consider the count so probably the most efficient right would be to do uh, well you could argue maybe but feet or inches uh, if I say let's go inches right we know that that uh, one foot is the same as 12 inches so when I say I'm counting feet I can say I'm also counting 12 inches so now I have two of two 12 inches two groups of 12 inches right and one group of four inches and two two of twelve that would give me twenty four so twenty four inches and four inches now gives me twenty eight inches okay. right. if we looked at feet right we could totally do that we could switch to feet instead so we could keep it two feet and Four inches we know if it takes 12 inches for a foot that would be um, four of a 12 because um, one inch is a 12th of a foot if it takes 12 inches to make a foot one inch one inch is this is four one inches so it's four one twelfth feet so we get two feet plus four twelfths feet. If you want them to simplify, right, we could reduce that down to two feet and a third feet for two and a third feet, okay. which is still obviously a valid answer, right? But we've got to get those like units, like terms to be able to combine those together, okay? Big idea number two. Just staying in with that idea of addition, right? Let's talk about some of the language of addition, okay? To, uh, to kind of help our learners understand really what we're doing when we're combining values with addition. That's what we do. We're combining like terms, like units, like counts through addition, okay? And so here are a couple of words to consider when you're reading addition and simply, uh, and simply saying, and instead of simply saying adding, right? Five plus added to, uh, but and in gaining, those really help our learners understand that we're combining those values. Five and two, five and two, five and two is seven, right? Five gaining two, five gaining two. With subtraction, we could use the word losing, right? Gaining and losing, uh, students really pick up on and can follow really uh, pretty well. Okay, sometimes when they get caught up in all the signs and stuff, are, are we gaining or are we losing? Okay, how do we combine those? Okay, um, and so then we're just gonna go through these, identify the terms with boxes, and then simplify through a common count. So we're gonna, we're gonna highlight this, the different terms so that to know if we're recognizing terms or not, and then we're gonna get common count and uh, simplify, okay? So, so again here, when I see this five, I need to know it's counting something. Right, this five um, is five ones, so that's a count. That's a term, and then the two is also a term because it's a count as well. And so because they're counting the same thing, five ones plus two ones, that would be seven ones, which equals simply seven, okay? Uh, next one, we have five halves plus eight halves. Five halves plus eight halves. Again, highlighting the different terms. A term is a count of something. So I see I have five one halves or five halves. Well, that's a term. Okay. And then eight halves, also a term. They're already counting the same thing. They're counting halves. I have five halves and eight halves. So I'm still counting halves. Now we've got a total of 13. 13 halves. 
which we could write if, uh, we could write as an improper fraction if desired, right? Convert it to a mixed number if you want to, however, right? Okay, this next one, four of A plus, uh, and five of A and two of A, or four of A gaining five of A gaining two of A. Looking at these different counts, we've got four A, we're counting A's, we have four of them, 5a and 2a, each of these counting a's. Because they're counting the same value, they have the same count, right? Uh, they're all counting a's. 4a, uh, 5a is 9a, and 2a would put us at 11a. Okay, next one. 4 of x plus 1 plus 8 of x plus 1. 4 of x plus 1 plus 8 of x plus 1. Again, we're looking for counts, okay? So 4 of x plus 1, that's a count, and 8 of x plus 1, that's also a count, okay? And this first one, we're counting x plus 1s, and we have 4 of them. The second term, we're also counting x plus 1s, and we have 8 of them. So we're counting x plus 1s, here I have four and eight of them, which means I have 12, 12 X plus ones. And depending on, uh, you know, you could, we could leave it like that. If we're just focusing on combining the terms, if you want them to continue simplifying, you could do that as well. Okay, five uh, A and two B, here I have A's, I'm counting five of them, that's a term. Here I'm counting B's and that's two. I look at these, I'm counting A's here, I'm counting B's, different counts, okay? And so, uh, so these are not like terms the way they are. And we'll, we'll talk about different ways we can, we can work to get like counts, okay? But we can, we can sit, there, <clears throat> sit there for now, okay? Um, this next one, 10y squared and 6y, and 4y squared. Again, we're looking for count, we're looking for terms. Can students recognize terms? That a term is a count of something, okay? So I've got 10y squared, because I'm, I'm counting y squareds, I have 10 of them. I've got 6y, counting y's, there are six of them. And then the last one, 4y squared, right? Counting y squareds, and I have four of them. We're looking for like counts, which is what we get with the y squareds. We're counting y squareds, so that y squared variable, that doesn't change. What we're counting doesn't change. How many we have is what's changing, right? So 10, 10 y squareds, 10 of y squareds, and four of y squareds gives us 14 y squared. 14 y squared, and then the six y is its own Right, still its own count, because it's, it's counting y's, not, not uh, y squareds, okay? Um, and then the last one, 12 plus seven, uh, seven threes, 12 plus seven threes. Can they recognize this 12 is a term because it's counting ones, right? 12 ones, 12 holes. So this 12 is a term all by itself. And then seven threes, seven threes. And why this is really beneficial, right? Instead of simply having them follow order of operations, because there's gonna come a time, right, when they're, when they're doing much more algebra and they're gonna have variables involved and so they're trying to simplify, but they can't do order of operations anymore, okay? So if we can bring in this idea of terms, of counts, even with arithmetic, it's going to help them be stronger, be, be, better, uh, be better set to step into algebra when they can't when they can't do those operations, right? This gives them more of an algebraic view of combining and finding values, okay? So because here, I don't know about you, but uh, I see students a lot of the time, they'll say 12 plus seven, they'll call that 19. And they'll say 19 times three. But if they'll recognize that this 12 is a separate count, right? It's counting ones, it's counting holes. Uh, so that so we can't com we can't combine the twelve and the seven because the seven's counting threes and the twelve is counting ones. 
The only way we can combine them is to get the, if they're counting the same unit, right? So a simple way we could do that, right, is, is we could change them both to ones. We could call this 12 ones, and this would be 21 ones. Something a little more interesting, though, is what if we called, I see this is counting threes. So is there any way we could change 12? What's the equivalent of 12 if we count by threes? How many threes would give us 12? Well, four, right? So 12 is the same as uh, four threes. And then we've got seven threes. So now we can see we're counting the same thing. We're counting threes. How many do we have? We have four and seven. So that gives us 11 threes, which then uh, would be 33 ones or 33 holes as a most simplified answer, okay? But this idea, having them identify terms, what they're counting, are they a common count? Can we add them together? Do we need to try to make some adjustments to be able to do that, okay? It's really good thinking and they're practicing their factors, they're practicing, right, their multiplication as they're, as they're working through this. So it builds some really good number sense, <clears throat> okay? Last one, we've got uh, four fives and three eighths, four fives and three eighths. Again, highlighting, highlighting the terms here. I'm counting fives, I have four of them, and I'm counting eights and I have three of them, okay? Two different terms, counting fives, counting eights, those are not like counts, so we cannot add them just like they are. So we've got, we've got to do some adjusting. So, but I notice here, I see a four and I see an eight. So what if we change this four fives, instead of four fives, what if we called that five fours? Right? We talked previously two threes and three twos are the same value. Four fives would be 20 holes or 20, one, 20 ones. Five fours is also the same thing, so those are equivalent. And then three eights. What if we counted instead of eights, what if we counted fours? So we would have three of two of four. So we're changing eight into two counts of four. Two fours, that's what eight is, two fours. So this gives us five fours plus six fours, which is 11 fours. We, get, we happen to get 11 again. 11 fours for a total of 44, okay? But looking for a common count, that's really some deep thinking as they're doing that, okay? Language of addition, working through there, okay? Uh, and, then I, and then we're gonna come, I'm gonna come back with studio time uh, that you have access to and uh, talk you through different ways we can look for common counts.